Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, using your home equity prudently, part three in our series on the number one New Year's resolution, getting fiscally fit. In segment three, we're talking about using our home equity wisely. And remember, some people are so in debt that what they'll do is they'll consolidate all their loans, go to the equity position of their home, their bank will loan them money at a three and a half to 4%, maybe 5% depending upon their credit worthiness, and then all of a sudden they see a low, low, low payment and they restart building their credit card balances back again. We don't want that. So we want to be able to use our home equity wisely. It's probably the cheapest money you're ever going to see. And so to use it wisely, I want to use it to consolidate, to get out of debt, and to stay out of debt. I don't want it to just consolidate and then I start ratcheting up and going into my credit cards again and making my balances or increasing my balances. I can't save when I have debt hanging over my head. And I can't use my home equity loan uh, my home equity and always loan against it sooner or later you'll tap out your equity line of credit and remember that thing could be called in an in a increasing uh, a market so you got to be careful how to use it and my job is is to keep it short term as short as you can let's get down gets get out of debt let's pay it down if we're going to use our home equity to do it that's great get rid of all our cards just keep a few essentials and then call it a day it's the only way to really make sure that you're going to do it and it's going to be a discipline a lot of people don't have routines. A lot of people don't have habits. They have to bring in a new discipline and get fiscally fit. It's the only way to really approach money. And when you think about it, you're looking at home equity loans. Your home is a collateralized uh, a debt, your mortgage. Now you're going to the equity line of credit. Most equity lines of credit, HELOC loans, are 10 years. They charge annual interest and you have to pay it. They could call the note if they need to. And remember, none of this is FHA on this side of the fence on the HELOC loan. So when I'm using it, I want to be able to do it because there's an attraction and there's some good use to this. So home equity loans are a great idea. And what I want to do is, I sometimes, sometimes it's called a second mortgage. I just like home equity just for the purpose of managing my debt, getting out of it, and then freeing up and not carrying a second mortgage. I don't want to leverage my domestic spending with a second mortgage if I don't have to do it. I'm using it to get out of debt. It's one of our tactics that we use, but it has to be done in a way that the math makes sense, and you have to be able to sit there with good routines and good habits and discipline so that you can pay down your cards using the equity line and then not return to your increasing balances. That's the goal. And remember, there's a lot of attractions here. And they may be easier to get. You never know. If you've got good equity line of credit, it could be very easy to get. The rates are generally lower than unsecured loans, which is far by, by far better than going ahead and paying 16 to 22% on a credit card. The interest is tax deductible, though there may be a cap. And remember, that could all change under the new tax code. And check with your tax advisor. It's not just check with your financial advisor. You have to check with your tax advisor. The whole law has just changed. It's been a huge overhaul, the first overhaul we've had in 30 years. You have to understand what is and what isn't allowed anymore. And remember, there's no second interest for a second home, no interest deduction. So you've got to look at this idea and say, is this worth it? If you're getting a deduction and you fall under the numbers and you can actually do it and it's not phased out because of your income, you could be looking at a pretty good deal here if you stay true to why did you do a second mortgage? Why did you do an equity line of credit? To pay down my debt, to keep the balance down, and to return to fiscal responsibility so I can start getting cash flow every month and putting money aside. It's difficult to put money aside when you're sitting with debt. Home equity lines of credit are great tool that we use to manage debt and get out of debt. And if you're willing to stay true to it, we'll go ahead and show you how to do it. General rule of thumb, you want to look at some of the basic ideas of what you can borrow. As a general rule, you can borrow up to 80% of your equity in your home with a home equity loan. For example, if you owed $75,000 on and your home appraised for two fifty, dollars your equity would be $175,000. Some people have held their homes through all that's happened from 2008 to 2018, a whole decade where we've seen increase in the actual equity positions of our homes, the sale of homes. It's a real seller's market right now. So you might be looking at that number and saying, wow, that's pretty good. I probably got an equity line. But again, remember, we're using the equity line to retire debt. We're trying to manage our debt. This is one tactic that we use, and we want to use this. And in most cases, you'll be able to borrow up to maybe 140 or 80% of that 175000 So keep in mind, again, beware of the risk 
If I'm going to do that, remember, when home equity borrowing has many advantages, but it has a serious drawback. If you default, you could be in some serious problems and fall behind in repayments. And remember, the lender could come in and close on you. So you want to be able to look at it and make sure that you have income, you make sure that you have a solid foundation in your financial thinking, that you're using this again just to retire debt. Here are some dangers, and I want to make sure we do full disclosure on our show. Here's some dangers. Remember, when you're doing this kind of tactical issue, especially if I'm retiring debt and I'm using my equity home, uh, home equity wisely, there can be very expensive when you consider the total cost. So that's why I'm only using it to develop cash flow. The moment I've moved my balances over here, I'm going to pay this down so I don't have a HELOC loan or a second mortgage or an equity line of credit. I want to be able to get this off my balance sheet immediately. You risk losing your home if you default on any of the payments. And keep in mind, even if the value of your home decreases, the amount of your loan stays the same. So we had an inversion in 2008 where people had a great equity line of credit, they were paying the annual interest, and the value of the home went below the total first mortgage and equity position, and they called the note. And many people didn't have the cash or wherewithal to pay that note. So keep in mind, that's a very big issue when you're thinking about this. Now, when you're talking about reverse mortgages, whole different story here, because HELOC loans, which are traditional for people that are under 62 years of age, and HECM loans, home equity conversion mortgages, that's a completely different set, and that's for people who are 62 and older. You can actually get reverse mortgage and get income coming in from your equity position. You could actually buy a home with uh, your equity position if you sold your home and you wanted to buy a new one. You could actually have an appreciating line of credit and it's FHA approved, uh, I'm sorry, insured, and the FHA not only does that, but there's no interest, annual interest to pay. There's no loan to get called. It's specifically built for seniors. So when you're, if you're a senior and you have equity in your home and you're, and you're looking through rough times, this could be a wonderful way to play because you're not going to get called. It's FHA loan. It's FHA insured under HUD. And those are some of the beauties of using uh, a HECM loan, home equity conversion mortgage, versus a traditional HELOC loan. Just keep in mind, there's gonna, they're going to set a rate. You're going to have mortgage insurance on whatever you borrow. You can use it for income. You can use it for buying a home. You can use it to create an appreciating line of credit. And some people actually buy a home and have an appreciating line of credit as a combination using their home equity wisely during their retirement. The biggest issue that I love with uh, reverse mortgages, if it's done correctly, is no matter what you do, whether you use it for income, purchasing a home, or opening an appreciating line of credit, I always like it because I want to eliminate my mortgage payment. The last thing I want to do when I'm sitting in retirement is to have any kind of a payment. Now, I still have property taxes I have to pay, my HOA fees, my home insurance, all that I still have to pay. But the actual mortgage and payment, one of the great beauties of a home equity conversion mortgage is I eliminate my mortgage, again, depending upon the equity position of your home. And many seniors have that. So you should look at this and see if that's a better deal than the HELOC loan. For seniors that are over 62, keep in mind that the older that you are, the better the deal because it's age determinant. So if your timeline of living, your lifespan or your life expectancy is shorter, you're actually getting, you're probably able to use the numbers in a better way. So I may not have to put as much money down for my uh, a new home. I may be able to get more increase on my reverse mortgage income. Those are the kind of things you want to look at. And if you're over 62 and you qualify for this, that could be a big play. So I'm trying to use my home equity line of credit, whether it's HELOC or HECM, and I'm trying to do it to free up cash flow and to reduce my indebtedness. If you're using it over here to reduce your indebtedness, remember, once we've taken care of our credit cards and we move to move over to our uh, HELOC or HECM loans, I want to pay some of this off. I don't want to carry this on into my retirement. I'm using this now as a strategy to set myself up so that I can have more fiscal responsibility and I can create cash flow. If I create cash flow using some of these techniques, remember, I can then start to save and invest for my future, whether it's retirement or my long-term care needs or maybe even some of the things that I want to do from my uh, the benefit or charitable giving point of view to other organizations that I really like to see go on in perpetuity when I'm going. Don't forget to watch our next segment on Monitoring Your Debt, part four in our series on the number one New Year's resolution, getting fiscally fit. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas you hear on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or financial advisor. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game.